So hello and welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory. Today we're going to do a tour of the best upgrade, the best accessory, the best astronomy accessory I have bought, and that is the observatory. Now this has completely changed how I do my observing. I can be outside here in a matter of moments. It takes me longer now to make a cup of tea than it does to set up. And more importantly, in the small hours when I'm ready to pack away, it's just a case of putting the dust covers on roll the roof pack and then I'm ready to go in. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you a tour of the observatory, some of the key features, and then we're going to have a look at some of the accessories, some of the parts I've fitted as well, and some of the stuff I use to help me observe the night sky. So this is an 8x10 shed and I've also got the observatory warm room alongside it as well. That's what I use as a home office. So when we had this built, my wife and daughters wanted to use this as a hot tub. So I wanted to get changed in the warm room come out here, roll the roof back, sit in the hot tub under the night skies. But luckily, as you can see, common sense has prevailed and we now have a AZ EQ6, a Celestron C11, and then behind me, the Megray 90. Now, a lot of people make or adapt an existing garden shed. I actually got my credit card out. I was working away at the time. I just simply just did not have time to build my own observatory. So I contracted UK Home Observatories. This was back in, oh, 2018. Uh, and they came in and they did a fantastic job, leveled the ground, put the base in, put the shed on, put the roof on, wired it up to the mains, wired it up to the house as well. So I've got mains power in here. Um, reading about them on Stargazer's Lounge, they, they've really had quite a bad turn. I've certainly got no complaints with what they've done in here. But reading the threads on Stargazer's Lounge, it looks like they've done a runner. There's a buzzer going by. So as always, just make sure you do your due diligence, make sure you do your checks on whoever you use. And it's such a shame because they did such a fantastic job. And this observatory has been up and running now for so that's seven or eight years and it's absolutely fine. I have not got a problem with what they've done, but do read that thread about UK home observatories on Stargazer's Lounge. So this is an 8x10 shed and I'd always recommend going for the biggest observatory you can, get the most space the largest you can fit, the largest you can afford. The more space you have, of course, the more, the bigger telescope you can fit in it, the more accessories you can have, and just physically the more room you can move around inside. It's, it's, it's amazing how much you can quickly fill it. And this is a roll off roof observatory. So I just roll the roof back and I can see the entire night sky. I did think about maybe getting a dome and I visited a few friends who've got dome observatories. Now the problem with a dome is, well, I say there's two problems is that when I'm out here observing and I'm looking up at the night sky, it's so wonderful to be able to see the Milky Way, to see the odd meteor going past, to see the night sky. But of course, if you're inside a dome, you can only see out through the slit. You don't get to see the entire night sky. And that's something I, I wanted to have. The other thing as well is that this just looks like a garden shed. There's nothing else in it. And if you've got a dome, that maybe it's a little bit more eye-catching it certainly may attract a little bit more attention and so that's the two reasons why i went for a roll-off roof shed one so that i could just see the night sky and two just because it looks like a garden shed so let's have a look then this is the heart of the observatory then this is the az eq6 i got this as a, a return a second hand from first light optics and what i love about this is i can either be tracking in equatorial mode or I can have it as at the moment. This is set up for visual observing. So I've got my C11 on one side and I've got the Megray 90 on the other. And as you can see then, I've actually adapted, got two bino viewers. And as you can see, I've actually got two bino viewers. So this is a secondhand Denkmeyer bino viewer. And I'm really enjoying this because you've got a power switch here and I can adjust the power, the magnification from 0.6 times to one times to times two. So with one set of eyepieces, I can literally switch back and forth without having to swap the eyepieces over. On the Mercury 90, I've got a pair of linear bino viewers, which is the type where you don't need any bar lows, you don't need any optical correctors. If your eyepiece can come to focus, then the bino viewer will come to focus as well. So it's really nice being able to look through, you know, the high magnification, highly detailed view on this side, move over to the Megray, and then, of course, you've got the wide angle, sort of relatively low power field of view as well. So it's really nice being able to move back and forth between the two. And of course, having a telescope, having a mount like this means that I've got tracking, I've got go to. 
Now I hate, one of the things I really hate about these old Skywatcher mounts, well, all the mounts as well, is they have those horrible hand controllers. I think they were state-of-the-art back in the 1990s. So what I've done then is put a Wi-Fi dongle on and uh, that means I can therefore control the mount from my phone. I can therefore set the Sky uh, the Sin Scan app up and then run it on Sky Safari. And I really enjoy being able to use the sort of planetarium style display, planetarium control. Um, and I just hate, absolutely hate using those old uh, hand controllers. That's just gone in the box. And I just use the, the Wi-Fi adapter and my phone or my tablet as the control. So when I first had the observatory set up, I had a 14 inch dob, a Skywatcher dob, one of the tracking dobs, uh, tracking and go-to dobs. And I put the telescope in here on the plinth, on the floor, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't see over the observatory walls or couldn't see very far over the observatory walls. So that's why I actually changed. I sold the telescope, put a concrete pier in, and then use the second hand Celestron C11. And this is what I bought from a club member. He was trying to use this for deep sky imaging. Of course, it's not the best telescope for that. So I bought the second hand and again, use this as a imaging setup. Sorry, I now use this as a lunar and planetary imaging, lunar and planetary observing, and also then for visual observing as well. And it works really well. It seems to pack a lot of punch. You know, it's an 11 inch telescope, but it's only, what's that, two feet, two or three feet long. It's got the huge dew shield on as well. That's not part of the telescope. That comes off. I just leave it on. The telescope itself isn't that big. So it seems to pack a real punch. It's very, it's very ideally suited for an observatory like this, where it needs to see over the observatory walls. The other accessory I bought as well as the Bino Viewer is a Barda Click Lock. And this is so useful for holding the eyepiece, particularly, you know, if I need to bring the Bino Viewer down, even with that huge cantilevered weight, it still holds it really firmly. I put one on this side as well. So no matter what the angle is, I can hold my Bino Viewer perfectly securely. I don't have to be tightening those, those little thumb screws. It literally holds it on the ratchet. So we've got a heavy setup at the eyepiece end or the camera end, then a click lock is thoroughly recommended. So the other thing I fitted, well, not fitted, I bought is behind here, behind my observing chair is a dehumidifier. And that's really useful, particularly in the damp, in the cold, you can just really feel the humidity building up. So when I roll the roof back, I switch the dehumidifier on, leave that running. It just draws that moisture out of the air, helps keep the optics and helps keep them a bit drier and a bit warmer. So even though I'm not musical, I did actually buy a music stand the other day and I found this really useful. I read about this on Cloudy Nights and it's so nice being able to have your Star Atlas. So although I use Sky Safari, it's really nice to be able to use your Star Atlas, have a paper copy uh, alongside you at the telescope and being able to put this on the music stand it means I can therefore move it wherever my telescope set up. I can move this around and I've always got my Star Atlas to hand. I've got these little clips as well in case it's windy. And then I also bought a clip on red light. So when I had this built, I actually fitted a mains powered red light. It is probably a bit too bright uh, being mains powered. So these are really useful uh, being able to put these on and clip them on. And I can fit, clip the red light onto the music stand and I've got my charts. Whole load of crows just going overhead. <laughs> so one of my pet hates on astronomy equipment is they always have an LED to show they're powered on. And I find that really annoying. You're trying to maintain your night vision and it's your own equipment that's shining a light into your eyes. In particular, as your eyes get used to the dark, as your night vision, your dark adaption increases. Having these bloody LEDs shining in your own eyes, your own LEDs actually taking away the edge of your night vision. So I bought a roll of red tape and I've actually, I mean, I've had this for years now, but I've actually stuck red tape on all my accessories just to try and dim the lights down. You obviously want to see that the LED is on, that there's been powered but you don't want it shining brightly in your eyes. So get some red tape, put tape on all the LEDs, and then at least you can see they're on, uh, but you're not being dazzled by your own astronomy equipment. So this is the power accessories that I'm using. I've got a Pegasus Astro Box, and I've just 3D printed a clip to hold that in place. So this is my Dew heater controller. This is from Tim at Dew Control, and I've got that fitted to the telescope. That, gets, uh, that heats this element here 
on the Magway 90 and there's another element underneath the silver foil here and that keeps my optics, keeps them warm just above the dew point, just above the ambient air temperature and that stops dew forming on your optics. But by keeping the optics warm with these heaters on uh, means that therefore we're not getting dew forming on the optics. So I can be carry out, I can carry on observing even literally as water is running off the telescope. So this is my observing table. This is what I use to store my accessories. This is what I use to, as a sort of table when I'm observing. All the odds and ends can go on here. And then of course I've got the music stand so I can move that around as well. And this is so light. It's one of these sort of camping canvas aluminium frames. I can move this around the observatory and then have all my accessories and a table to write on and leave my odds and ends on. So one of the questions I'm always asked is why do I have a roll of silver camping mat wrapped around the telescope, wrapped around the Celestron C11? And it's simply to help keep the telescope at ambient air temperature. If you have your telescope uh, exposed to the cold, the, the cold atmosphere, the cold of deep space, the telescope will radiate away to that cold temperature. That means it's overcooled. You'll get tube currents running down the, down the inside of the tube, leading to a loss of image quality. And of course you get loads of extra dew forming on the telescope as well, that dew from the ambient air temperature. So by just simply sticking a layer of insulation on just helps keep your telescope at the ambient air temperature. And you're really lucky to see the observatory today because last weekend I actually spent about two hours out here spring cleaning, getting rid of a million spiders, half a ton of cobwebs, dead insects, all kinds of yucky stuff. It was very Indiana Jones-esque, I can't recommend it. But that's the downside of having a, you know, a shed in the backyard, a shed in the garden, is that it does tend to become adopted. You know, all the local spiders and insects soon find it. And if you live somewhere far more tropical than me, you're probably going to have far worse than just the odd spider's web to contend with. So do be careful, something will soon end up living in it wherever you are. So I really hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions or comments about the accessories I've got, or you've brought something that's really useful, then do put that in the comments. Uh, I would show you my travel setup, but I'm actually packing at the moment. I'm packing for another trip to go to Namibia. So I'm looking forward to bringing some more videos as we get out under those dark African skies. As always, my thanks to the Patreons. Thank you for your continued support, and I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky.